Russia tomorrow. Dmitry Medvedev's big dream for a World Cup final was a match between two countries that aren't hostile to Russia. The deputy chairman of Russia's Security Council said that for Russia, it would be great if the teams on the field in Doha were Argentina and Morocco. And he was half right. But it's not like Medvedev had a lot to choose from, in the sense that there is actually no one for Russia to root for. Of Russia's known enemies, only a few countries even came to Qatar, along with Morocco and Argentina, maybe just Brazil and Iran. And even with Iran, it wasn't so obvious as Iranian players showed support for protests at home and even refused to sing their national anthem, which for Medvedev would be dangerous and against Russian ideology, as the football players look like a fifth column. But anyways, for Russian officials and for Russian propaganda, Argentina's victory in Qatar is a chance to celebrate, a chance to be temporarily distracted from their televised hatred for Ukrainians and Americans, and instead focused on hating the French and Emmanuel Macron. Cry Macron. The football tournament is finally over. Argentina is undoubtedly brighter and more energetic and rightly won. Macron's presence only deepens the woe in Paris. Even Mbappe was unmoved by his embrace. It must be said that at the moment, Mbappe, who heroically notched the hat-trick in the Argentinian box, is much more popular in France than the current president, whose coalition was unable to score a decisive victory in the parliamentary elections this summer. Who is more in need of support? That's an open question. Cheap PR, shame and tears. This is what the pro-Kremlin propagandists had to say about the actions of the French president, who not only dared to express human emotions on the podium, but even went down to the field, hugged a footballer, went to the changing room and tried to cheer up the players. What is this anyway? Vive la République et vive la France. Судя по кадрам, Французам было не до Макрона, да и успокаивать надо было не сборную, а всю, всю страну. Сразу после финального свистка во Франции снова разбушевались фанаты, болельщики устроили погромы, погромщики закидывали полицейских камнями и отстреливались от них фейерверками. Russia's President Vladimir Putin is nothing like Macron. He would never stoop so low as to perform the unpleasant task of a quick chat with normal people, football players in particular, and never without a team of bodyguards, and never any emotions. Putin only cries when and where he needs to. In the stadium, he sits alone and in a bubble. These are photos from this year in early February at the opening of the Beijing Olympics. His decision to invade Ukraine was already set in stone and by all indications his visit to China wasn't for watching a sports parade but instead to agree on positions with Xi Jinping. As the world's press has repeatedly confirmed the president of Russia hoped he could storm a neighboring country in a matter of days and put an end to the Ukrainian question forever. This is Russia 2018 World Cup. Now, none of this is even imaginable. The Kremlin has crossed the line that Qatar, in the eyes of the Western democracies, has not. Before the start of the final this time, Vladimir Zelensky wanted to address the world but was refused. This is what the president of Ukraine was going to say. This World Cup proved time and again that different countries and nationalities can decide who is the strongest in the fair play, but not in the playing with fire, on the green playing field and not on the red battlefield. This is the dream of so many people when players compete, making everybody enjoy peace. Every father would like to take his son to a football match all over the world, and every mother would like her son to be back from war. Zelensky is called on the world to convene a global formula for peace summit this winter. But a video speech by the president of a country at war doesn't fit into the context of a football World Cup. And for the International Football Federation, this seems understandable. After all, there are rules. FIFA considers itself above politics and wouldn't allow Zelensky to share their platform. But 
for a long time now, something has gone wrong with the rules. One country consistently and openly breaks them. One country continuously demonstrates total contempt for pieces of paper and signatures. And at the same time, the progressive world is terribly afraid to go beyond its legal framework and imagine rewriting the rules. Why, for instance, is Russia still sitting on the UN Security Council and blocking all measures that could help the victim of its own aggression? There are questions in this sense, both to the USA and to China. How is it even possible that the only structure with a mandate to ensure peace and security is unable to function? The other day, the two U.S. congressmen, Steve Cohen and Joe Wilson, submitted a draft resolution to the House of Representatives, calling on President Biden to seek Russia's exclusion from the list of permanent members of the U.N. Security Council. This is what White House Press Secretary Corinne Jean-Pierre said immediately afterwards. If there were a path to suspend Russia from the U.N. Security Council, we would pursue it immediately. Uh, unfortunately, we don't see uh, the UN, uh, we don't see um, uh, the UN rules changing, and so we are focused on continuing to take actions to isolate Russia. As a victor in World War II, it was the Soviet Union that gained its seat on the Security Council, the USSR, not Russia. Since then, much water has flown under the bridge, but one thing has changed is that we no longer live on a post-war planet. Those days ended on February 24th, and the mechanisms that used to work have rusted and stopped functioning. Now it is time to come up with new ones. But nobody in the West has the courage to accept this in fact or admit this in words. To say it's time for us to reevaluate our entire system of global security, to define new platforms where we take into account our experience from the war in Ukraine and from our own wars and create a high tech mechanism to replace our worn out junk. And yes, we need to speak about the war in Ukraine everywhere, including at the World Cup, because hundreds of children and thousands of adults have been killed. Millions are freezing in apartments right now without water and electricity. What's more, President Putin doesn't believe that it's necessary to retreat now or ever. Over the past 10 months, I have become completely convinced that the Russian president is obsessed enough with the idea of taking over Ukraine to try to take Kiev again. And not only Kiev, but all of Ukraine. He will try. The only question is how exactly he will be stopped and how many people will die before the end comes. Russia's mobilization worked. It is not true that their problems were so terrible or that these people won't fight. They will fight. The Tsar has ordered them to war and they will go to war. By our calculations, they have a reserve force from 1.2 to 1.5 million people. Right now, Russia is preparing around 200,000 fresh soldiers. I have no doubt that they'll make another attempt on Kiev. According to Ukraine's commander general, the war's next phase will start in the new year and will see the most active fighting yet. Quote, at best in March, at worst at the end of January, end of quote. But Zeluzhny is convinced that if Kiev is supplied with weapons, then Ukraine will recapture the territories occupied since the beginning of the war. Zeluzhny also said he expects an attack on the city of Kiev from Belarus. And it just so happened that Vladimir Putin arrived in Minsk on Monday. A friendship that endures. But behind closed doors, what did the co-aggressors discuss and why, for the first time in three years, did Putin personally visit Minsk? Usually, the Belarusian president comes to the Kremlin whenever he is called. And this year alone, Lukashenko has flown to see his senior comrade seven times. So perhaps the special touch of personal persuasion was needed because it's clear that the Belarusian dictator categorically does not want to send his soldiers to war. And he understands that if the events continue in this direction, a popular revolt is within arm's reach. Put everyone in jail. 
With this solution, there won't be any more problems. In Russia, they write, rewrite and add more and more new rules and each new ban is crazier than the previous one. Just this week, the State Duma adopted a law against desecrating the St. George ribbon as a symbol of military glory. For the lack of respect for a piece of fabric, violators will be fined up to 5 million rubles or the exchange rate equivalent of 70,000 American dollars. In addition, ribbon critics can expect up to five years in prison. This was in 2018, even before the pandemic, before Putin's isolation, before his decision to take over Ukraine and take on the world. The next World Cup will be held in three countries, USA, Canada and Mexico. There will definitely be no Putin, but there is a chance that the Russian team will be able to go there, but only if there is no Putin only if the war ends, only if a tribunal takes place and only if Russia starts paying reparations to Ukraine. Only if they disband the UN Security Council and assemble a new structure where, of course, there will be no place for aggressor states and any attempts at unprovoked use of force will be stopped. And only then will we perhaps have a chance to repeat the celebration on Red Square, step away from politics with a clear conscience and shift our attention to sports. We operated in Russia for 12 years and the government tried to get rid of us three times. We had to leave, forced out of the country by new repressive laws after the first week of the war. Our freedom crushed by the authorities. We survived, started working from Europe and now we are watched by millions of people every day. There is no other independent news channel in Russian. We have now decided to tell the truth about Russia in English as well. So that you could get news about Russia, the war in Ukraine and Russian society directly from the source. We want to tell you firsthand what is really happening in Russia. Subscribe to TVRN Newsroom on YouTube and let's take a look at our future together.